Well, why don't we watch another patient scenario? Joe, Joe, hmm. the police found hmm. you lying on the sidewalk. What happened? Okay, okay. Why can't you just let me alone? You were here yesterday. What did you do after you left? I went down to the square and met my buddies. We had a few. And the next thing you know, I'm here. Okay. So you were drinking? I noticed you had this bruise and this little cut on your face. Did you fall? Did you get into a fight? I don't know. I can't remember. All right, Joe, what's your date of birth? January 22nd, 1951. All right, what month is it right now? September. No, Joe, it's April. Where are you right now? The hospital. Um, Brigham and Women's Hospital. Okay, I need to take your blood pressure and your temperature and put this on your finger. This patient appears to be known to the emergency department staff. He was found on the sidewalk and brought in by the police. He has bruises on his face and a small laceration. His Glasgow coma score is 14 and he is disoriented to time. Joe does not need immediate life-saving interventions, so he is not an ESI level one. But his presentation is concerning. He has visible signs of trauma to the head, and he has no recollection of what happened and obvious alcohol consumption. He meets the criteria for ESI level two. His presentation is high risk, and he is disoriented to time. Patients who are well known to an emergency department are often high risk, and it is important not to minimize their presentation. A triage nurse should always maintain a high index of suspicion with well-known patients to the emergency department, especially when they present with substance abuse, any signs of trauma, or a language barrier. This patient meets ESI level two criteria. Tell me something, do you see patients like Joe? Sure, sure. sure. Do you agree he's high risk? Definitely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we need to be very careful with these type of patients. Do you have any questions about that case? No, but it's interesting. That's where, with people who are drunk, are repeat visitors, mm -hmm. that's where I see mistakes. Mm -hmm. In my years in the ED, that's where I've seen the most mistakes in triaging patients. That's really easy to do. You right. see these people mm -hmm. every day, sometimes several times a day. Sure. And it's very hard to keep that high index of suspicion up. But you're right, it's that's true. when bad things happen. I've seen a heart attack and uh, a couple of other things that were missed, both by the pre-hospital personnel and by us. Easy for these people to have bad head injuries. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And we need to assume at this point that he had one of those mm -hmm. and that alcohol was just another factor. Mm -hmm. So he is definitely an ESI level two. Now what would happen if we couldn't wake him up? Like if you shook him and he just wasn't responding to you or it took a painful stimuli, would that change his category at all? Depends. If he was handling his airway and everything, yeah. I don't know. Right. If he's unresponsive, you're right, he becomes an airway issue, which could bump him up to level one. Absolutely. That would definitely bump him up to a level oh, one. Okay. He would need immediate life-saving interventions. He would need to be intubated. He um, cannot protect his own airway. So remember that definition of ESI level one. Right. 